What's up guys, Rogue9 here and I've finally spent some time exploring the two variants of the ITA-12 shotgun in Rainbow Six Siege and in this video I will be sharing my results with you. How similar are these two guns and what are the differences? Let's find out. I will be presenting the info in this video as I go along so rather than giving you a timestamp to a summary like I usually do, I will instead post a comment below with timestamps to the individual parts of the video. Now before we take a closer look at the two shotguns in the game, here is a brief overview of the real world gun behind the ITA-12, the Farbam STF-12. This modular pump action shotgun was developed as a replacement for the Farbam SDASS which you may also recognize as the GIGN's SGCQB and it went into production only a couple of years ago in 2014. As you can see from the Farbam website, the STF-12 comes in quite a variety of different types and the ones we see in the game are the 22 inch barreled STF-12 pistol grip initial and the 11 inch barreled STF short initial. So here we have two guns that might be expected to be quite similar and in the game they share a lot of common features. For instance, each is able to utilize the exact same attachments and I also tested their fire rate and reload speeds and found them to be exactly the same. The long variant of course, just like its real world counterpart, comes with a capacity of 8 shots and 33 spare while the short can only hold 5 shots and being a sidearm only has 21 spare. Technically the ammunition for each gun should be interchangeable and if you equipped both the ITA-12 L and S at the same time, you should have a shared pool of cartridges, but this is not the case in the game. Comparing the two guns in-game stats, we can immediately see that there are some significant differences between them. The short variant has a listed damage rating of 66 points for each of the 8 pellets the gun fires, while the long variant only does 47 points of damage. These stats of course are only valid for light armoured targets at short range and in and of themselves don't give us a full picture regarding each weapon's stopping power. No, what we really need to know is their damage drop off as range increases. So I tested both guns meter by meter and came up with the following results. As you can see, the drop off for each gun starts pretty much as soon as you are no longer in touching range of your opponent, with the short version initially losing power very quickly up until 6 meters before the curve flattens out and reaches a minimum damage of 14 points at 11 meters. The long variant has a much more gentle drop off and from around 3 meters distance it will outperform the short version in terms of damage per pellet and its final minimum damage is 28, twice that of the short. The maximum range for each gun is, as I have mentioned for other shotguns in previous videos, 40 meters. As you can see, once you go slightly beyond this distance, even the reticle will turn white, indicating that you will no longer be able to hit your enemy. And while we're at it, another quick thing I could demonstrate here is what I meant with previous comments saying that shotguns cannot land headshots. Of course you can shoot your opponent in the head with a shotgun and this can result in getting a bonus score, but shotguns do not have a bonus damage multiplier when you land a headshot. As you will probably know, one pellet of each shotgun shot will always land exactly where you're aiming, and as you can see here, aiming at the head at max distance only does the minimum damage of a single pellet strike, just as it would if you struck the body or arms. Now, the drop-off already gives us an indication as to why the short variant doesn't always feel as powerful as one might expect. And in addition to the crippling drop-off, the short also suffers from a greater spread than the long variant. I tested the spread in the same manner as I did in the laser sight analysis video and discovered that the short variant has a spread that is 35% larger than that of the long variant. Or conversely, the long variant has a 26% smaller spread than the short, whichever you prefer. This is important of course, since a smaller spread will mean that more pellets will land on target at longer ranges, giving the long variant another significant advantage. In fact, I also ran another couple of tests to see at which distance each of the guns can still one-shot a light armor enemy, and without laser attached for the long variant this was around 7 meters, while the short only managed to do this up to around 5 meters. The spread of the guns also affects their wall breaching capabilities. At very short range you can see that they create exactly the same kind of impulses, but once you get a little further away the additional spread of the short means that you are less likely to create a large impulse with a single shot. 
And finally, let's return to the in-game stats for another little difference. Since the short variant comes without a stock, it is harder to control its recoil, resulting in greater vertical muzzle climb. In fact, judging by the in-game graphs, the vertical recoil for the short is 12% greater than that of the long. Or, if you prefer, the long variant has an 11% smaller muzzle climb. In practice, though, this fact is almost irrelevant since the fire rate of the guns is so slow that they will always return to their initial point of aim before you are able to fire off the next shot. So, in summary, the two guns may be two peas of the same pod, but the shorter barrel of the ITA-12S ensures that it performs quite differently compared to its longer twin due to its higher damage drop-off and greater spread. And that's it. I hope that some of the info in this video is useful to you, even though we could have probably done with it a few months ago when these guns were released. But as they say, better late than never. Oh, and by the way, I have a Discord server now and there's all kinds of fun stuff going on there, so why not swing by for a chat or to play a game or two? Link on screen now and also in the description. And with that, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.